skin. Now with Halloween just around the corner, if you're still looking for a Halloween cake or you know somebody who'd love a little monster themed cake, then for this week's video tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this cute little guy that's covered in buttercream fur. Also, don't forget that if you enjoyed this video tutorial, you can subscribe to the Cakes Bannon YouTube channel. You can also click the notification bell and next to the subscribe button, and this just alerts you every time we upload a new video. Okay, let's get started. So in order to make my monster cake, first of all, I've got my sponge cake. So I started with a six inch sponge cake and I used my vanilla sponge cake recipe, which I will put a link to in the description below. This gave me a vanilla sponge cake that I divided into two tins. Once they were baked, I then divided each layer into two and I've just trimmed these down so that they're five inches in diameter. I also then made half the recipe again, which gave me another layer. So this one is around two inches and that's gonna sit on top now it's quite a high cake but I am gonna trim this top layer down and this is gonna give me a dome on the top of my cake so I'm going in with my serrated knife just tapering that top edge down give me a nice soft dome shape on the top now I cut it down to a five inch cake because I'm gonna be adding a lot of buttercream onto the outside so I wanted it to stay quite a tall thin cake now with the excess cake you could use this to create some cake cake pops or some cakesicles. I've then created a large batch of vanilla buttercream and I'm gonna make my monster in this teal color. So in order to get this color, I've used some of the color splash jade and also mixed in some of the Americola teal, which just gives a really vibrant turquoisey color. I'm gonna use this to fill my cake. So I'm just dividing all of those layers and popping the cake back together. I can then use the buttercream to do a crumb coat on the outside, locking in any of those loose crumbs. Around the side, I'm gonna smooth that out with my metal scraping tool. But around the top where we've got that dome, I'm gonna go in with my flexi smoother. So I'm just holding that flexi smoother at a slight angle. I'm running it around that top edge and over the top. When you're happy with the crumb coat, I'm then gonna pop it in the fridge for that buttercream to firm up so that we can add all the details. Whilst that's in the fridge, I'm gonna start making some of the details to go onto the cake. And I'm gonna start with an eyeball. I'm just gonna put one eyeball on the cake, but you can add as many as you like, depending on the type of monster you want to create. So I'm gonna start with a ball of white fondant and roll this out until it's around a centimeter in thickness. So my eyeball isn't completely flat on the cake. I'm then gonna take a piece of cling film or plastic wrap and a circle cookie cutter. Now this one is just under two inches in diameter. I'm gonna lay that cling film over the top and then use my cookie cutter to push in and cut out. By using the cling film, this is pulled tight as we push down with the cookie cutter, creating this soft dome shape. Once we have the main part of the eye, I'm gonna take a small amount of green and I've colored this with the Color Splash Leaf Green. I can then use the end of a piping tip. So this is a large piping tip and we've got an opening of just over an inch. I'm gonna cut out a green circle. To fix this into place, I'm using a small amount of water to make those two stick together. I've then got a very small piece of black fondant and use the end of a piping tip. Now for this piping tip, it just has a circle opening, which is just over a centimeter. And stick that again, just in the center. Taking my Dresden tool around that center pupil, just adding in some lines. So coming from the center and also from the side. Now you can either leave it like this, or if you wanted to add a small amount of more detail, I've got some edible tints. So I've got a woodland green, an apple green, and a foliage green. Taking a small amount of these, I'm gonna mix them with a small amount of alcohol or just some dipping solution or rejuvenating spirit to make a paint highlight some of those lines that we added in. I've then got a number four and a number 12 piping tip and these just have circle openings at the end and I'm using these to cut out two really small pieces of white which I can add to look like little light spots. So the first one I'm going to add to the top just going partially over that green and over the black and with a tiny piece of white I'm going to add this into the bottom corner. Now to finish it off, I've colored some white fondant in the same color as our buttercream. Pull this out until it's quite thin, so around one millimeter in thickness. I'm gonna use this to create 
an eyelid. You then want to cut a straight line, add some water, and I want it to slightly cover the green. I'm pushing that all the way down the side, and I can then just go in and trim off any excess. So there we have his eyeball that's going to go on at the front of the cake. Now I'm going to work on his mouth. Now for his mouth, I'm going to keep this quite simple. And I'm just going to roll out a piece of my black fondant into a long thin strand and trim this down. So it's around two inches. Now on one end, I'm going to taper that in. This is going to create a cheeky little smile. Cutting another piece around a centimeter just curving off those two edges. Now I'm gonna leave that to one side so that it will dry so that we can add it onto the cake. I'm also gonna take a small ball of white fondant and this one is just over half a centimetre in diameter. I'm gonna taper down one side so we get a point and just push that down, take off the top and this is gonna give me a little tooth. And I'm gonna do another one but make this one slightly smaller. Now, what monster would be complete without some horns on the top of his head? So I've got a small ball of orange fondant and a small ball of purple. Now, both of these measure around an inch in diameter and I've also got a cocktail stick, which I'm gonna use just to secure it onto his head. Taking the balls of fondant, I'm gonna taper these down on one side so we get a cone shape and I'm gonna do exactly the same to both. Now I want my horns to look quite stripy, so I'm gonna take those and twist them round so they meet at the top. I can then start winding those colors round. Now I'm starting to roll those two together and I'm also pushing them at the same time as we don't want them too thin. Just flattening out that fondant so it looks like it's one piece that it keeps its shape. And I'm gonna round off that top end. Now this is gonna be the horn for the right side of his head. So I'm gonna bend it in slightly, cut it down so it's just over an inch. I can then take my cocktail stick and just push it in slightly. Now you wanna do exactly the same for the other side and this is gonna give you two matching horns. The last things I need to create are some arms and some legs. So for his arms, I've got two balls of the fondant in the same color as his fur is gonna be. Now each of these balls for his arms are around an inch across and they actually weigh 14 grams each. I've then got a, another ball which is slightly larger. This one is about an inch and a half across and this one weighs 30 grams. Now, starting with his feet, I'm gonna roll out my larger ball, keeping this very simple, flatten that down slightly, and using my craft knife, just cut this in half, and these are gonna be two little feet that stick out from the bottom. Now, for his arms, take in the smaller ball. I'm gonna round this off, it's a fat sausage shape, and just flatten that down. Using my dressing tool on one side, I'm gonna push in, which is gonna give me a little thumb. Now, just under where we've created that, I'm gonna push in to create a little wrist. We get this little hand shape. Now, on one side, I'm gonna taper this down so that it will fit against the cake, just pointing down, and taking a cocktail stick, just push that in to give us a little arm. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same for the other one, but just have it going at the opposite angle. For the board that the cake is gonna sit on, I'm gonna be using a 10 inch drum board, and this one just measures a centimeter in height. Cover this in some white fondant. So rolling it out and attaching it to my board with some water. I'm then gonna smooth it out and trim off any excess. Now to finish the board, I'm gonna wrap some white satin ribbon around the edge and secure this in place with some double-sided tape. I do have a more detailed video showing how I cover my board, which I will link to in the description below. So once my cake has firmed up and it's come out of the fridge, I'm gonna pop a small amount of my buttercream onto my whiteboard and lift my cake into place. Before I add his fur, I'm gonna add some of his features on. So his little feet and his eyeball on the front. This way I can add the fur around the edge. So on the front, I'm gonna add a small amount of buttercream and just glue his eye to place. And the same for his two feet at the front. To create the fur, I'm gonna be using a piping tip and piping my buttercream on the surface. Now, for this, I'm gonna be using a grass piping tip. 
I've got two examples here, the 233, which is a smaller one, and the 234. Both of them have these small little cutout circles on the ends. And I wanted to show you both so that you can see the comparison of them next to each other. So the smaller one is gonna give you a lot finer strands for your fur, but for this video, I'm gonna be using the 234. So this is the larger piping tip. So it has eight circles cut out. I'm gonna pop this into a piping bag. So snipping off the end of my piping bag, I'm popping that piping tip in and just pulling really tight until it's nice and secure. Now, if your buttercream has been left standing for a while, make sure you give it a nice stir with your spatula just to beat out any air bubbles that have built up. So to pipe the fur, I'm gonna take my piping bag and just hold that piping tip against the side of my cake. Once the piping tip has come into contact with that buttercream, I'm gonna apply a small amount of pressure to the bag, pulling away from the side of the cake. When the buttercream is around a centimeter away, I'm gonna stop applying pressure and just pull the bag away. And this is gonna give me the effect of fur. Now, starting at the bottom, I'm holding it right against the board so there's no gap. Apps. Once I've done a row all the way around the bottom, I'm going to come up and just start working my way all the way up. And when I get to his feet, I'm going to come over the top so they poke out. Now, if you're finding at any time that your buttercream is getting really soft and the fur is starting to droop, you can just pop the cake in the fridge for those bits of fur to firm up before you carry on. <laughs> in fur so now it's time to add the final little details so I've got his two horns and I'm gonna pop these in just on the top then got his mouth so I'm just gonna push this a slight angle onto that buttercream with his two little teeth and finally his two little arms. So this one is gonna stick down and this one is gonna go upwards. So here we have this finished cute little monster cake covered in all this buttercream fur. I really hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and will find it useful if you wanna make your own little monster creation. If you have enjoyed the video, as always, don't forget to give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to the Cakes Balance YouTube channel. Now I'll put a link in the description below to all the tools that I've used throughout today's video and also my social media if you want to follow me there. So until next time, bye!